Apex Express, Asian Pacific Expression. Music and calendar, new visions and voices, coming to you with an Asian Pacific Islander point of view. It's time to get on board the Apex Express. Welcome to Apex Express, news and views with an Asian and Asian American point of view. For this special Thanksgiving show, we think about the things we are thankful for. We talk with writer, chef, and environmental activist Eileen Suzara. In addition to a heartwarming interview about her work on the land and in the kitchen, she provides us with a healing recipe to share with our loved ones. We also give thanks to the cultural workers out there and feature music from our community. We'll play tracks from the 18 Million Rising Voices of Our Vote compilation, featuring 32 politically empowering tracks by an eclectic mix of Asian American musicians, as well as songs off of Anak Bayan, Long Beach's May Day mixtape, fueled by hip hop. We're your hosts, No No Girl. And oh. Bringing you our special Thanksgiving show. Keep it locked right here on Apex Express. First off, we give thanks to a leader in our community, Eileen Suzara. In October, the Institute for the Study of Societal Issues at UC Berkeley presented Eileen with the 2016 Thomas I. Yamashita Prize. This award goes to a social change activist scholar in the early stages of their career. Their work transforms the existing social landscape and serves as a bridge between the academy and the community, and we couldn't think of a more deserving person than Eileen. She is a land and kitchen-based educator with roots in the environmental justice and community health movements. An alumna of UC Berkeley's Master's in Public Health Nutrition, she is passionate about helping young people grow as ecologically minded, culturally literate leaders in the good food movement. Collaborating with Filipino Advocates for Justice, Eileen supported the launch of Baha'i Kubo, a garden in Union City that builds upon FAJ's youth leadership model with hands-on experiences in growing and sharing healthy Filipino food. In 2015, the project placed first in the Big Ideas at Berkeley competition. She's an advisory member to FACES, the Filipino-American Coalition for Environmental Solidarity. She's also an eco-culinary educator with the Sama Sama Cooperative, which works to reclaim language, culture, and land-based traditions. She is hard at work on a sustainable Filipino foods business that connects traditionally inspired diets and entrepreneurship as a tool for change. After receiving the Yamashita Prize, I talked with her about farming, food, and stories, starting with her food and storytelling pop-up, Sariwa. So in 2011, Sariwa came about as a collaboration between Faces and with the People's Kitchen. And so what we were doing at that time, it was, um, I think, post-Typhoon uh, Haiyan. Um, so a very difficult time realizing how climate change was just affecting the most vulnerable communities. Um, but we decided we were going to do a pop-up as you know a fundraiser, but also just as a community gathering space. And as part of Sariwa, we want to focus, um, I think, on the fresh roots of Filipino cuisine to highlight all the ways that the food reflects the seasons, reflects a really, I think, deep ecological connection to, to land and to place. And as part of that, we actually went around and kind of crowdsourced recipes from different different, you know, mothers and activists and, um, you know, health advocates and artists and created a, a collection of sorts of stories of, and recipes together. And so we included that and had a completely sold out pop up for, I think, over a, over 130 people. People just kind of kept coming through the door. Can you describe what you cooked at that event? Sure. This was um, like this was four or five years ago, but it's still very vivid. We had like a smoky, you know, tofu with um, coconut milk for our, you know, vegetarian folks um, that was based on sisig, which is usually made with pig cheeks and ears and, and parts. And we had a chicken adobo um, that was made with coconut milk, which is usually associated with Bicolano cooking. Um, and it's an area that's really known for its coconuts and chilies. Um, 
And I actually don't remember the rest of our menu, mm. Robin. <laughs> oh, that, that right there sounds great. <laughs> so we've talked about some of the cooking. So you got your MPH, your Master's of Public Health. Can you talk about, with your background in, in food and in farming, um, what your intention was to go for that MPH? Well, all these you know seemingly different pathways converged on was I wanted to understand how colonization affects our health today and how that manifests in the food that we eat or that we cannot eat anymore, um, connections to land or how we do not connect to land anymore. And most importantly, just how we can tap into all the resilience and all the survival strategies so that we could restore health, both in our bodies and also just our relationship to land too. So I guess when it came to getting a master's in public health, I kind of was driven by this question in which I had heard echoed so many different times from family members, even from health practitioners saying, oh, Filipino food's going to kill you, you know, and, and I thought, wow, that's a very painful thing to hear because on one hand, these are all the things that, you know, you associate with memories that are positive, things that you cherish, you know, family gatherings, celebrations, that feeling of comfort and love with food. And on the other hand, you hear this this other scenario saying that it's giving you diabetes or cardiovascular disease or any number of, of diseases and that you need to stop eating it. And I thought, well, ultimately, when I hear that, I hear your culture is killing you. And I think we need to change that story. We really need to change that story in part because it isn't true. Um, or it doesn't have to be true. And so when I was getting in the MPH, um, I made my focus on revitalizing um, traditional foods, whether it was the actual ingredients, different vegetables, different fruits, different spices, and also just the values behind them. Because, you know, I think living in California, we have access to some amazing produce. But for those who have to make adaptation because of income, economics, or just things just don't grow here, I think we could still hold on to the healthy center of where our traditional foods come from and have integrity to that even if we have to change things around a bit. Like, I don't know the specific foods that people would say are unhealthy, but I, I, I know that, like, there's a lot of meat, mm -hmm. very few vegetables that are typically associated with Filipino cooking. Mm -hmm. And so when you go back to the traditional recipes, um, how does it differ from what we would associate with Filipino food today? Mm. Goldilocks or... Goldilocks, Jolly Bee. So I will just add, you know, I definitely will enjoy my deep fried pork piece when it's in front of me. But I think what's really important is to see there's this entire universe of, of different foods. And one of the touchstones I like to come back to um, is the song Bahai Kubo, which is a children's song. Bahai Kubo, kahit munti. But if you look at it in a different way, it's actually a crop plant, and it has over two dozen different types of vegetables, everything from long beans to eggplants to tomatoes to jicama to mustard greens. You know, you get the point, and of course there are many other vegetables that didn't make the cut for the song. And just to look at how, you know, in the haiku was as a, a song, which I think is familiar to a lot of different generations, um, and put that side by side with what we might see or think of as the, t the typical Filipino food, I think we can we could see the direction that it can go. Can you be more direct about that? Sure. I always think of um, adobo, lumpia, and pancit as like the gateway foods to Philippine foods. Um, but where does eggplant fit in? Or where do we have kabocha squash? Where do we have all these different crops? How do we also, you know, play up, I think, the, the rich legacy of food that's from the land? I know that we shared that we'd done Sariwa as a pop-up um, in 2011 as a fundraiser. But I've returned to that idea um, while, while getting an MPH to look at a pop-up as 
a culinary intervention for health as well. So for Soriva, one of the key pieces to it that we got really a little bit obsessive and excited about was creating these um, vegetable cards that would have um, some of the Baha'i Kubo veggies on it, like kabocha, like, um, or kalabasa, like sita or the long beans. And we would have an etching and also an invitation to share a memory or a story that you might have connected to that vegetable. I think that was just an invitation to all of our guests, all of all of those who were joining the meal to connect to ingredients and to also surface some of their opinions, feelings, and thoughts around it. So I guess you would say a storytelling way to get about what a survey might try to do as well. And if you <clears throat> refer to adobo and panset and lumpia as the gateway to Filipino food, what are those more vegetable-oriented dishes that, that we should be trying out? Pinak bit. I think that that is belongs as part of the gateway foods. It's um, mostly coming from the Ilocos region and usually has kabocha and sita or long beans, tomatoes, onions, and any number of other vegetables mixed in. And um, just a side note to share about Pinak Bet um, is uh, this summer when I was working with different youth, um, we, we looked at Pinak Bet both as a recipe or a dish that connects to farming so closely, but also how is it a food that um, we might even affiliate with resistance struggles in the Philippines or here in the U.S.? Because it is a food that's something that any of our, our grandmothers or grandfathers might have made it just because you use what you have available. Mm. Do you have another uh, another one you can think of? Sure. Um, let's see. Other recipes. I, I love to make ensalada talong, which is like a, a roasted eggplant and tomato and onion um, type of salad. I, I do like to play with different salads. And um, one thing, you know, that I've I've learned from Amy Bessa, who's this incredible, you know, culinary historian, cookbook author, restaurateur. Uh, she's really shared that um, Filipino salads Technically, typically didn't have oil, not as a necessarily trying to be, you know, focus on health or calories, but more because um, different flavors like using souring agents from um, citrus fruits was something that was much more common or using vinegars um, and having playing up the, the tanginess of flavor. And this is a little bit harder to, to recreate here in California. But when I was just back in Hawaii, one one uh, dish that I was making with folks there um, was ensalada ng pako. And so that is using these fiddlehead ferns. And um, you could just kind of blanch them. They're these beautiful, you know, curly, frilly ferns. And um, some of the farmers there still ha- harvest them wild from the rivers. And you can just make them into this vibrant, fresh, delicious salad. Great. Thank you. You're listening to Apex Express, and we're talking with Eileen Suzara, a land and kitchen-based educator with roots in the environmental justice and community health movements. So we've been talking about the foods, but an important part of the food is the is the the growing of the resources. Um, so can you talk about the ways that you've gotten your hands into the ground and the people that you've had join you in that process? Baha'i Kubo which is not only the children's song, um, but is also now uh, the project name um, for a collaborative community garden in Union City um, with Filipino Advocates for Justice and with their Filipino Youth Coalition. And the story behind that, it actually weaves together, I think, the environmental justice, climate, growing up food and cooking up food all into one package in a way. Um, because, you know, uh, Lillian, who's um, been part of FAJ since the very beginning, um, she approached Faces and she said, well, in Union City, we have land that the landlord said that we could grow something on. What do you think? And so, of course, a number of us lit up because we have backgrounds in food or with farming or gardening. And I especially felt lit up because about uh, 12 years ago, um, I'd actually written a paper as a youth dreaming about having a Filipino culturally focused garden somewhere in the Bay Area. So it just felt like the stars were aligning. And these amazing youth who already organize around anti-racism and, and you know, engaging voters and um, peace building in their own communities. A number of them were very new to gardening, but they brought everything that they had to help to envision, design, and to develop a garden. And I think that combination of 
you know, really strongly rooted community organizing and having a space, which is sometimes one of the biggest stumbling blocks to getting something that started aligned. We, were, we built a strong proposal and that was actually able to get seed funding from Big Ideas, which is this competition here in Berkeley. Um, and what was interesting, and I'll, I'll share this now, is that many of the other groups that were applying um, in this competition for funding were very focused on technology, technological solutions to food systems issues. And we were told that we were probably one of the only groups that focused on culture. And that, in a way, there was something that was both old school, like, of course, you could, you have gardening and food practice in your own cultural background, but that doesn't often get recognized as innovation in today's world. Mm. So I think that 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 helped it stand out and we were able to get the funding and start the garden. And where are you at with that? Um, what, what is it producing? What's the yield? How is the food being used? <laughs> so the garden is still, it, it's in a growing stage right now and, and it's winter, so things are kind of quiet. But what we've had there so far is um, the youth have used, I think, as a, a gathering space. They have several raised beds and have been growing different peppers and squashes and flowers and herbs. Um, and I think things are going to be kind of quiet now, which is a good time to plan. Um, but some of the most, I think, exciting things that had happened there is not only was it linking up with their already existing work and program, but it's become a place where we um, were able to host a, a visiting, you know, climate justice um, advocates from the Philippines who came who came to the garden and were able to to talk about I think the very very bigger picture of climate and environmental issues, and then relate it to something that could seem very small, but also meant a lot to a particular community setting. One small garden and how that is part of building our resilience on a different scale, too. So it's been great to go on this journey with you, kind of throughout the Bay Area and back to Hawaii. Um, and so where are you at now with this, all of this experience um, with the land, with the food, um, with your public health knowledge? Um, what's next? Pulling together all of these experiences, um, I decided to, to focus on Sariwa as a food business. And... I've actually been able to, to link up with uh, La Cucina, which is this uh, incubator program in San Francisco that centers on women, especially women of color and immigrant women, uh, to build up food businesses. And through Sariba, you know, I think I just want to operationalize all the things that we believe in, which is being able to source from small farmers, especially small farmers of color or beginning farmers, um, to be able to support them in the work that they're doing to still have an educational component to it. And then also just to make food that I think taps onto all these resources of recipes, um, food stories, and the rich history of, of our cuisine. And what is your end goal? Like, do you see it being a catering business? Do you see it being a brick and mortar? Ah. One of my, my dreams around it is to, to actually um, get food even closer to people who are looking for healing, and that actually means bringing the food to hospitals and to clinics, and especially to, to getting um, culturally relevant food to those who are in charge of healing, and be able to have fresh, vibrant, delicious Filipino food for staff or families or anyone who has to walk through those doors to get some healing for themselves. We've been talking with writer, educator, environmental justice advocate, and natural chef, Eileen Suzara. So we want to close out. Um, you were talking about healing foods, and I think you brought a recipe that will be so meaningful us in these turbulent times. Yes. And so just recognizing the moment that we're in, I think it's it's so important to, to ground ourselves in food and also, if you can, um, sharing food with other people. I think that could kind of anchor us. And so um, one of the, the recipes or dishes that I wanted to share is actually a very simple one that's probably familiar to a lot of listeners, which is lukao, or as my mom from Pangasinan calls it, pospas. Um, some of you might also know it, which is called arroz caldo, and it's just a rice soup. Um, this dish, it could be made you know, with chicken as a base, or it could be made vegetarian. Um, but you could just um, boil chicken, or you can have your vegetable broth, and then you'll have rice. And actually, this is a great use for day-old rice or extra rice that you have. Cook it with um, a stock, with ginger, 
with onions, with garlic, um, until it just forms a really soft stew. And the fun part is when you start to just add all, all the different toppings. It could be eggs that are sliced, um, green onions. You could add some chili peppers if you're like me and you like a little spice. Um, you can add crispy garlic bits. So go nuts with it. Add add different toppings with it. Um, but one spin that I like to, to put out there, which surprises people sometimes, is that... Um, I like to use rice of color. <laughs> so often I think the rice that we'll see is, you know, coming from jasmine rice, which is delicious and wonderful. But um, I remember actually being in the airport in the Philippines once and they had a, a pot that was kind of concealed and they wouldn't show you a sample of it before you bought it. And it was called Lugao with a twist. And then when they served it, it was red rice as a soup. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, why am I locked into thinking that you can only have one kind of rice? And so, you know, if you're trying to set at home, I encourage you to try using red rice, try using black rice, try using brown rice. Um, the sky's the limit with it. That was Eileen Suzaro, winner of the 2016 Thomas I. Yamashita Prize, going to a social change activist scholar. It's a revolution in the country of my origin A history of fighters with the people supporting them National democratic movement of the masses Trying to break the cycle of poverty and classes Access to education, healthcare, employment People ain't used for a foreigner's enjoyment Land is life and it's divided outright So a peasant ain't a peasant, maybe farmers on rice See a city at night, made of scraps like the trash With the people lost, they landed with Lord You can ask how they stopped the demolition of their homes. They got organized in the movement. You ain't alone. The workers, the vanguard, the front line is worldwide. Work for that dollar, but hardly can survive. Send back that hard earned to families. Back home, get treated like slaves. Working in care homes. Caregivers, housemates, nurses, purpose. Do the kind of work that makes the bourgeois nervous. Courage to organize under the eye of Impe. Deportan a la migra. Sanctuary city. The children getting bigger. I can paint a picture, make the situation realer. If you criticize the government, the military kills you. This is for Melissa, who survived to tell a story. Fight for Jonas Burgos, even victims under Corey. Now with sons in office, no one more to worry about the hostage and the massacre, how it was so glory. Glory be to those who gave their lives to the movement. Saw the future of their children and moved to improve it. Artists making music while they organize and work as if you end up in the book and serve the people, it's your purpose. Oh, in the war with inside Even though they reap what's not right They don't treat you like you're worthless Take my hand so we can fly high That's the only way to survive Or serve the people, it's your purpose Serve the People by Power Struggle, featuring Rachel Lastimosa of Dirty Boots off the Anak Bayan Mayday mixtape. And that kicks off the music section of tonight's show.
We want to honor the cultural workers by playing some of their music and honor you by uplifting your spirit. This year, Power Struggle released the EP This Might Kills Fascists on the Beat Rock label. Nomi says the title was inspired by the legendary American protest folk singer Woody Guthrie, who wrote the slogan on his guitar, This Machine Kills Fascists. In the spirit of keeping hip-hop protest music in an era where neoliberal capitalism has co-opted the music of the streets, he hopes this album educates, agitates, and inspires people to keep fighting for a more just and peaceful world. Next up is Bay Area native Yay Ming and the Rumors with Where Did Our Moment Go? Off the debut album released this year, I Will Make You Mine on Burger Records.
driving You fell asleep in the car So I drove around slowly Like a moon around Mars
patient ones May we never forget the ones we love The reason I struggle, reasons I grow Make me a seed in my soul Love for my community Cause we so strong like the Nanook tree And we go long, you can't approve we Cause we flow in from the earth And into the sea where bubbles give birth That's where you find we surviving Thriving, rising on the rising Sakada kumiki lord lord Kito sigi halom
Okay. Thanks to Facebook, I learned about that last band, A Waz Do, a punk band from Boston. The band is fronted by singer-songwriter Tanya Palit. She performs under the moniker Saraswati Jones, which is an homage to the Hindu goddess of wisdom, education, music, and the arts. Their debut EP, Kite Fight, is made up of Bollywood covers, but Kite Fight is one of their original songs. Before that, we heard Back to Guahan by Erica Nalani Benton, who was with Little Sister. And before that, we heard Scrabble's Moon Around Mars off their 7 7 12 self published wedding compilation. And it's what um, the two singers, Dan and Aya, walked. Well, actually, it was just, it's what we heard when Aya walked down the aisle. And we kicked that set off with Ye Ming and the Rumors doing Where Did Our Moment Go? Now I'm handing the reins over to O. Thanks, Nono Girl. I've selected four songs from the Voices of Our Vote compilation produced by 18 Million Rising, the online civic engagement org that attempts to leverage the cultural influence of the 18 million AAPIs in this country. The compilation was meant to mobilize voters for the recent election, but uh, we know how that turned out. (laughs) Nevertheless, I think these songs will help inspire the fight that's about to be waged in the Trump regime. The first song is the Kaminas See Something, Say Something, which is a riff off of the post-9-11 Homeland Security campaign of vigilance. But the song and the video for it illustrate the fine line between vigilance and racial profiling. It's a deceptively breezy, mellow, soulful song with a break that whips the listener back into perspective.
the boat. No, 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 not just tell the tip of gold. Yo, 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 wake up time and it's critical. Homie, they are not invincible. We are not invisible. We are not invisible. No, 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 not just tell the tip of gold. Yo, 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 wake up time and it's critical. Homie, they are not invincible. We are not invisible. And when the sun goes down, that's when you're fooling around. Cruising the town till the men in blue all come out. I'm taking back streets to the factory. I think they after me. I swear I didn't do it. Come on, man, stop harassing me. But that's the time, dude. That's just what I'm used to. Who's who in the world filled with cuckoos? It's crucial. So I choose to take the high road. Might go psycho, ice cold on the mic, though. Plane, make a change, do it now. Tomorrow's too late, no someday, do it now. One cry, fall on deaf ears. But together our voices loud The past died for you to have the choice, use it now Don't consume what the media feeds you Even that to give your heart attack Spots the message, mislead you But we smarter than that Recognize the power we hold Won't barter that, the world is ours How hard is that? We are not invisible No, 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 not just stereotypical Yo, 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 wake up time and it's critical Homie, they are not invincible We are not invisible We are not invisible No, 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 not just stereotypical Yo, 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 wake up time and it's critical Homie, they are not invincible We are not invisible We are not invisible We are not invisible I'm a girl who puts her bass in your face Shaking it left to right Sister bumping through the night This is the life we lead Eat, sleep, breathe and repeat it Loving it like I need it I feel so good, I feel so free I wish the whole world would dance with me This love is worldwide And I feel your vibe Don't you ever stop It's keeping me alive I just want to rock you with a global star All around the world, the move is globalized I wanna feel your soul, I wanna hear your voice No need to back down, you know you have a choice I wanna hear all the music inside you I wanna see what moves you and inspires you Don't ever compare, just do your thing There's a place in the sun for all the styles we bring To all the people across the globe What you create is worth more than gold Don't ever hold back, give it to me real Keep the fire blazing with the love we feel To all the people across the globe What you create is worth more than gold Don't ever hold back, give it to me real Keep the fire blazing with the love we feel <laughs> everything tonight give it your all take your time and do it right want you to open up cause i want to know inside there is a mystery you gotta let it show the sound is louder and louder from all the drum beats and power the music's harder and harder this is not mine this is ours who i am is a flower the kind you want to devour gotta show me love keep it on lock feel so good better not stop let's break the rules tonight right to the other side a place where we can find something for you and i i'll be there for you if you'll be there for me and we can fight together in the struggle until we're free they want to hold us back but we don't want to wait I'll never give up, I'll never hesitate Till this mission's due, I'll do it all for you When the beat drops, well that would be a you To all the people across the globe What you create is worth more than gold Don't ever hold that, give it to me real Keep the fire blazing with the love we feel To all the people across the globe What you create is worth more than gold Don't ever hold that, give it to me real Keep the fire blazing with the love we feel
You are listening to Ginji, More Than Gold. Ginji is a Pinay musician from Los Angeles who blends global bass with Filipino influences like the kulintang, the metal gongs used in traditional folk music. Before that, we had Buhai Kali with Invisible. Buhai Kali is an MC duo from San Diego. And starting off the set, we had the Kaminas with See Something, Say Something. Before that, we had Buhai Kali with Invisible. Buhai Kali is an MC duo from San Diego. And starting off the set, we had the Kaminas. See Something, Say Something. You're listening to Apex Express, and this was our special Thanksgiving show. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, Apex is produced by Salim Hamarani, Marie Che, Ellen Choi, Preeti Mangala Shekar, Robin Takayama, and Michael Yoshida. You can hear our archives on apexexpress.org, where you can also sign up for our podcast. Before we sign off, we want to give a special shout out to the folks over at Standing Rock. And to close out the set, we've got one more song. This is Red Barat. They are an eight-piece band from Brooklyn. They blend hard-driving North Indian bhangra with elements of funk, go-go, rock, and jazz. And this is their joint hala ball, which means raise your voice, something we're going to be doing for the next four years. <laughs> We've been your host, No No Girl. And oh.
Uh oh, <laughs> that was an abrupt ending. Sorry about that, folks. What can I say? So glad you chose to hang out with me this evening. This, if you just tuned in, I'm grateful that you're here. But before we go any further, I want to let you know. I want to let you know this, and then we're going to get into some music. And uh, wow. We know the predator. We see them feed on us. We are aware to starve the beast is our destiny. My two sisters and brothers. We are now in the revelation. Welcome to the city, but are we free? 